Polaris is the master of magnetism. Some may call her the Magneto of Daylor, with a little less gloom and doom. Additionally, Polaris allows for some of the most interesting decisions to be made in all of Too Many Bones. And with that comes complexity. I'm saving Polaris for last in my Unbreakable Gearlock series for a reason. She's complex. Chip Theory in general has done a really great job of making unique gear locks and Polaris might be the most unique and I think a good place to start with Polaris is what makes her so unique in her innate. I think we can demonstrate what makes her so unique by zooming in on her gear lock map. Polaris has a trajectory board on her gear lock map. All of those empty circles correspond to spaces on the battle map. You then also have these magnetic orbs that you'll place on the trajectory board and use to deal damage, manipulate movement, manipulate baddies, apply status effects, apply buffs to other gear locks. Really everything runs through this trajectory board when it comes to Polaris. The core loop for Polaris is to get her orbs on the board. And we'll talk about how to do that in a second. It might be helpful to understand how we use these orbs. The core aspect of these orbs is demonstrated through her backup plan. The major thing that you're trying to do is to get these orbs on the board and then recall them back to you. When they're recalled back to you, they do damage to any unit that they pass through. Now, when recalling an orb, it has to take the shortest path back to you. You can pick which one benefits you the most. There are a couple ways to get those to come back to you and deal that damage. There's two backup plan, minor and major recall. There's also one skill die, which we'll talk about later, that'll help you to recall as well without having to use a backup plan. With minor recall, you recall all the orbs back to you on the board one at a time. Every time it passes through a baddie space, it does that baddie two damage. If it passes through a gear lock space, it does one damage. And that damage effect is triggered on the space the orb starts in. No orb effects are ever going to hurt you, so no worries there. But you do have to be smart about other gear locks out on the board. So for example, if you have these baddies lined up, you can recall this orb and it will do two damage to all of these baddies. If these baddies happen to have two or less health, it can knock them all out at once. However, if there's a gear lock in that line, it's going to damage them as well. So that's the first puzzle you're trying to figure out, especially if you're in a co-op situation. If you're in solo, you have much more agency with these orbs and you don't have to worry about collateral damage. Now for four bones, you get the major recall. And this one gives you maximum dopamine when you pull it off. It feels so good. So instead of doing the two damage to baddies, it does four damage to baddies. So you can imagine what kind of havoc that that could do, especially if it's on the other side of the board and you could possibly line up and hit all four baddies at the same time. And it can happen. Now the flip side is you do do two damage to other gear locks that it passes through. So once again, in the co-op situations, you're really gonna have to coordinate and think about how and when you're going to recall those. And on a side note, the innate plus one basically enhances to allow you to recall any number of orbs instead of all of them. That'll become important, especially if you're trying to set up future big moves or minimize collateral damage to other gear locks. While we're in the backup plan, let's run through real quick the rest of the results before we move on. You can either add one to your Seeking Stones counter die or unexhaust the Iron Orb die, which we'll talk about in a second. We already went over Minor Recall for two bones. Three bones is solid, Mag Therapy, heal for three HP. We already went over the four bone result in Major Recall. And then for five bones, we have Orb Restore. You can unexhaust all Orb Sage die. And that brings us to our very first profession, the Orb Sage profession. It is the core profession that no matter how you're playing, you're going to want to invest heavily into, if not completely into. Essentially with Orb Sage, this is how you're going to set up these giant recalls. It's also the core way in which you get orbs onto your trajectory board. Every time you place the result, either in your backup plan, active or lock slots, you also get to place an orb either on your position or an adjacent position. So you can imagine rewinding back to that backup plan. If you unexhaust all of the die that you've already used, you could simply get more orbs out on the board and that's more possible recalls or other synergistic skills that we'll talk about later that interact with the orbs and where they are in the map. The first skill we're gonna start with is iron orb. We're starting with it because it starts on your mat. There's no need to train it. And it has three core results 
that are shared either fully or partially with the other dye in the orb stage profession. So recycle is great. After a recall, you can exhaust this dye to place another orb back out on the board. Magnetic pull, pretty simple. Exhaust this dye to move any batty adjacent to an orb onto that orb's position. And then magnetic push is the polar opposite. Get it? Basically, if a baddie is on the orb's position, you get to push it to an adjacent position. So moving on to the nickel orb skill, it shares recycle and magnetic push, but it does have two really interesting and very important locked results that you'll likely be trying to get at some point. So the first is heavy orbs during a recall. You can move each unit that's touched one position. So if your orb goes through a space on any unit, you can move it to a one position in any direction that happens to be open, of course. This can become important if you're trying to set up big future recalls or you're trying to get other units out of the way for another recall in the future. Floating orbs is great. It is the ultimate setup for these recalls or some of these other skills that we're going to talk about in the future. During your movement phase, you can move any one of your orbs to an adjacent position and you can do that however many times you want. Moving on to cobalt orb, it shares all the results on iron orb and has one more very interesting result that could come in handy especially when you're playing in a really crowded board with two three or four gear locks it's orb support and orb support i love to use it's a really powerful way of getting damage on the board without recalling any orb but it also rewards you for the number of orbs that you have on the board basically the way it works is you get the number of attack and deck equal to the number of orbs you're adjacent to so if you're surrounded by orbs that could be a plus four it also doesn't have the down side of the collateral damage that recalls will have with other gear locks on the board. We could really stop there. Between your innate, the minor and major recall, and orb sage, 90% of your game plan is there. You want to get orbs on the board. You want to line up baddies so when you recall those orbs, you hit the maximum number of those baddies as they go through. Everything else we go through is going to add fun, power, and flexibility to what we've already walked through. So now let's make Polaris just a little more fun and powerful Moving on to the wellness guru profession. So healing aura and negative vibes use the orb positioning to hand out either healing defense or negative status effects. With healing aura, if another gear lock is on one of your orb positions, pretty simply put, you can give them buff HP or an active defensive die. And with negative vibes, you either do damage, apply poison or weaken to any unit that's on one of these orb positions. So you have to be very careful here. This one is a little trickier to use in high player accounts, but incredibly powerful. And both of these are another great way to utilize these orbs on the board prior to recall. This is a really great point to highlight. From an order of operations perspective, obviously you're not wanting to recall early if you have these other skill die that are going to interact with these orb placements. Otherwise, they're useless. Natural Empath is not something I'll use a whole lot. It's highly situational, but essentially allows you to transfer status effects from and to units on orb positions. With Orb Apothecary, their active results allow your orb damage to get through those pesky defensive die. With Jagged Orb, you can choose one orb that's being recalled, and every unit that it touches, you can actually add the bleed effect die. And with Armor Piercing, you can choose one orb, and all of its damage is true damage. As you can imagine, incredibly powerful. So next there's Orbital Strike. If you can get that deep in this profession, is a must train. It allows you to do an instant recall, which you can pick one baddie and recall an orb to its position, dealing one damage to each unit it touches. Obviously that's powerful because you're not using up that orb and you're still getting the benefits or the damage of a recall. And precision recall is awesome, especially if you have an orb far away. You do the same as instant where you pick a baddie's position and recall an orb to it. And each orb you recall does the number of damage equal to the unoccupied position it crosses through. So that could be really big, especially if you're whittled down to one or two baddies and there's a lot of open positions. You could also imagine how much more powerful that is in solo because those open positions are likely easier to access. So now we're moving on to Movement Coach. No matter your build, I think most people will be diving into Movement Coach a bit. It all starts with repolarization, gives you maximum flexibility and moving yourself around the board. You can even pass through occupied positions. You can imagine with minor and major recall how important this will be. Additionally, allowing you to position your place in an optimal spot to deploy orbs for anything really. 
And that leads to electromagnet, which is just kind of repolarization on steroids. It lets you move yourself and or orbs the number of positions rolled. You can also pass through occupied positions there. And then Scrambler is great. You can basically teleport yourself to any orb position. Then you can place a stun effect on an adjacent baddie up to the number rolled. We have a little housekeeping here. There's a couple consumables to talk about. Extra orb is an awesome consumable die. It allows you to deploy an orb up to two spaces away and you deal the number of damage rolled to that unit. You can also then place this into your backup plan as bones. And we all know how important that backup plan is. We've already mentioned Seeking Stones, but didn't go into what it does. It's a counter die that starts on your mat. It can be maxed with Fortunate Discovery or ticked up with the Gather Stones backup plan. You can decrease it by one during your Resolve Your Roll stage to re-roll any unused Orb Sage die. So if you don't like the result, we'll just roll it again. It also lets you re-roll any Delve die, which is a perfect transition to the Mineralist profession. So before we delve into the mineralist profession, I'd like to ask Chip Theory, why? I feel like there is plenty to do with Polaris already. And that leads me to, I don't know when I'm actually gonna go into this. All these die need to be trained and I don't know when I'm gonna feel like I have the luxury to actually train these die instead of some of these awesome other professions. But if you like gambling, they could pay off in a really big way, including up to giving you some of those training points back. So basically in recovery, you roll all of your delve dice. If not in the active slot, you're also welcome to remove a previously used delve dice that's sitting in your active slot and roll that as well. You can roll your delve dice up to the number of delve dice that you've trained. So if you've trained three, you get three rolls. However, it's a gamble each time because if you decide to re-roll the delve dice, you have to re-roll all of them. And why is it a gamble? Let's go through some of the results. There's delve, deep delve, and dark delve. There's no real negatives on delve. It bones, loot, and defense. With deep delve, it's two buff HP, gaining a trove loot, or unlocking a previously acquired trove loot, or you have to take two true damage to start a battle. That kind of sucks. <laughs> Especially on a die that you've essentially paid two training points to get to. The third and most powerful is Dark Delve. That's the one I would be going for if I was going down this path. Like if you want to be the, the mega gambler, uh, I guess this is where you'd go because you get two buff HP or a training point that you can immediately use or you have to draw one point baddie and add that to the BQ. So you can see I wrestle with, is it worth it to use those training points to get there? And do I feel like gambling? It's not something I'm going to go into much. I suppose it's nice to have the option but starting out with Polaris, I'd probably recommend go elsewhere with those training points. So now that we've gotten through the mechanics and skills of Polaris, let's talk a little bit about builds. We're gonna go through both a solo and a co-op variety, both of which have major commonalities, but there are some key differences I wanna point out. So Orb Sage is first and foremost, as we talked about before, that is core to Polaris's being as a gear lock. I train all three of those skills and focus on getting heavy orbs or floating orbs locked. And with Wellness Guru, I'm feeling free to go into negative vibes. I don't have to worry about the collateral damage that it will deal to other gear locks since there are none. That will then give me access to Orb Apothecary, which will allow me to get through the nasty defensive die. And then of course, Orbital Strike. Simply, it just gives you more attempts at recalling with different enhancements. So I think it's a must. And with Movement Coach, every single time I'm going into Polarity Switch, and if I can get to, as nice as Scrambler would be, I feel like Magnetizer is undeniably wonderful, especially with its ability to unexhaust that Iron Orb die that will then hopefully allow you to get more orbs out on the board as well as use its result in a later roll. So differences in co-op. I'm still going really heavy into Orb Sage, trying to train everything there. I think the only real difference to point out is I'm trying to lock orb support. And I'm doing that because I want flexibility to try to get damage on the board, utilizing my orbs without the problem of dealing with collateral damage to other gear locks. So with the Wellness Guru, I'm kind of swapping to the other side of this tree and, and starting with Healing Aura. Obviously, that's a great support skill. I'm also going into Natural Empath because I think the opportunity to transfer those status effects is much greater in that larger party size. And then that will give you access to the previously mentioned super skill in Orbital Strike. And Movement Coach remains unchanged. I'm still sticking with Polarity Switch and Magnetizer. So with Polaris, I think there's an interesting path in both solo and co-op. If you're looking for that next 
next level challenge and you've played all the gear locks you have and some of them are starting to feel a little too simple, this is an awesome gear lock to graduate to. She's kind of like playing chess when all the other gear locks are playing checkers. You're really having to think a couple turns ahead. You're having to think a ton about movement. You have so many options to manipulate those or positions and or yourself. You also get really great opportunities to utilize those or positions to apply effects or healing or damage. I can't ever see myself perfecting her. I hope you enjoyed this guide. And if you've made it this far, maybe think about subscribing. I have plans for more Too Many Bones content coming. I already have guides and all the other unbreakable gear locks as well as playthroughs for each of them. So check them out if you're interested. And I appreciate you watching. And on that note, I'm out.